Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and we're talking today about iOS 17.5. Now, Apple has released the RC version of 17.5 and we're now just days away from the release of iOS 17.5 to the public, which will of course be the last big update to iOS 17 before we move on to the first beta of iOS 18, which is just a month away from now and should be very, very exciting. Though this update, of course, 17.5 RC version came in at around 6.5 gigabytes. Of course, that will be different on different devices, but also different based on which software you're currently on your device. And when it gets released to the public, once you get it on your device, if you're not updated to any of the betas of iOS 17.5, you're on 17.4 or 17.4.1, then of course it will be much smaller than this. And the new build number for iOS 17.5 will be 21F79. This is the build number of the RC version of 17.5. And if Apple doesn't release a second RC, which most likely they want, then this will also be the build number for the public release of iOS 17.5. Now 17.5 will bring quite a few new features and changes to your device. Even though in the first look, you might think that there are not a lot of new features. There are actually quite a few, but we're going to talk about some new here in a second. But first of all, let me just talk about some specific bugs that Apple has fixed that actually were very, very annoying. First of them will be the alarms bug. This is a bug that has been bothering a lot of users where the alarm won't just go off. And that's, of course, a very, very nice fix that Apple has done. Also, the airdrop speed on iOS 17.5 is insane. Apple has done this amazing improvement with the airdrop on 17.5. And you will notice the speed once you have updated your device. Another bug that has been fixed with 17.5 is the markup bug for PDF files. So under the files app, if you mark up something, it wouldn't just save yours, basically the markups that you have done. Now you can see right there, it does save them and it works properly. Now with the latest 17.5 RC version, Apple has also brought here new wallpapers under the pride collection. You will find the new wallpapers. You will have like a few different modes, but of course, once you choose one of them, you can just swipe like this to see all of them. Now the wallpapers have this amazing like animation when you unlock and lock your device. It's pretty cool. So let's just choose one of them here. Let's just add it to the lock screen. And you will notice on your device when you just swipe up to unlock here, you will get that animation and it actually changes every time you unlock or lock your device. So you don't get the same animation all the time, but it will change every time you unlock and lock your device. One of the best features that I think Apple is bringing with iOS 17.5 is cross-platform tracking notifications. So here's what I'm talking about. If you go to your settings and you go under notifications, right here you will find something called right here tracking notifications. Now tracking notifications will basically send you a notification when an air tag or maybe an AirPod is following you. Well, that will now work with other devices as well. Devices that are not certified by Apple. So even if they are from a totally other company, if your iPhone detects them following you, then it will send you a notification, which actually is very, very useful. Now with 17.5, Apple has also brought another feature called repair mode. Now this is very useful as well. So previously, when you would want to send your device for repair to Apple, you would have to remove the Find My and all that from the device in order for the device to be repaired. Well, now you no longer have to do that. You can just tap on remove device and it will show you this pop-up. This iPhone is linked to your ID and cannot be removed while it's online, but you can still prepare it for repair. So tap on continue and it will send it basically to a repair mode, which will make the device work as it should. But at the same time, it won't require you to remove or disable Find My from that device. There's also a smaller change here on the weather widget. So you will notice right there the current like weather degrees are a bit smaller and the font has changed a bit here on the weather widget and as you probably know by now we also have another change here for the podcast widget now when you're playing a podcast the widget will take the color 
of the album art of that podcast you're listening to. And the news app now works offline, of course, if you're using News Plus. So if I'm not connected to the internet right here, you can see when I go to news, it will say that it's on, on the offline mode. You can see right here, there is no internet connection and it will show you the last time that the news app has actually been updated. Now, what's really cool, of course, is that you will actually have a few settings for this. So if you go under the new settings right here, you will have news plus offline mode you will have automatic downloads which you can enable there but then at the same time you can choose to optimize your storage making the news app download smaller version of the images so it doesn't take a lot of storage but you can also choose here what you want to download automatically on your device and last but not least when talking about new features but we have some other things to talk about as well is that apple has now allowed devs to actually place their apps on their website this is unfortunately only available on eu so basically just devs placing their web their apps on their website allowing users to download directly from the website without having to go through the app store or any third-party app store now, when talking about a new update, of course, two of the most important things are battery and how does that update perform? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the battery right here. Now, I've been actually very satisfied with battery life on iOS 17.5 until the last beta. But of course, for the RC version, we will have to wait a bit longer. And as you can see right here, this is the time, basically the running time that we got with beta 4 and you can see the last few days at actually has improved quite a bit because the first few days when you install a beta you don't basically expect expect it to actually perform as it should until the update settles in on the device but you can see right here with exactly 50 percent battery we got six hours on screen time which is really good then here we have 75 percent battery again nine hours 40 minutes that's actually amazing and this one right here around maybe 85 percent battery eight hours 55 minutes then here we have another one here like 80 percent battery nine hours three minutes it's actually quite good and keep in mind that this battery is still at 100 percent capacity so actually overall a pretty pretty good performance when it comes to battery and when it comes to performance, here is our comparison to iOS 17.4. This is 17.4 right here. This is 17.5. These tests both, ta both taking with Geekbench 6. So 7,338 on the multi-core score, 7,432 on iOS 17.4. So we see a decrease right there. While the single core score remains almost identical right there, 2,955. 2968 so we'll have to wait for the public release of 17.5 and just let it settle in for a few days before we take a final test and see how ios 17.5 will compare to 17.4 when it comes to performance of course using geekbench 6 let's just quickly talk here about the updates so if you have updated to any of the betas of ios 17.5 well, what you need to know is that if you update to the RC version, you won't get the public update because it's basically the same. So if you're on beta 4 or any other betas and you don't want to update to the RC version, you just want to update to the public version of iOS 17.5, then make sure you go ahead and go to general right here, software update, and just go ahead and turn off right here the beta. So just click off right there. If you have updated already to the RC version, of course, you won't be getting the public update, but it's still the exact same update, so you don't need to worry about that. So, what's next? Well, I would expect Apple to release iOS 17.5 to the public next Monday. Most likely the 13th of May will be the date then Apple releases iOS 17.5 to the public. We might see tomorrow maybe another Aussie version, but that happens sometime. It might happen, it might not, but it won't actually make a difference. But as far as the public release goes, I would expect like 90% sure it will be the 13th or maybe even on Tuesday, but most likely it will be Monday, May 13th. So should you update or not? 
I think this is a great update. Even though it's a great update, it performs good, battery is okay. I would actually wait a few days just to see if there will be any like major issues because it's different for a software release to be on beta and tested just by a few people and it will be different when it gets out to the public and gets installed by millions of people so maybe just wait a couple of days and see if there is any major issues with this update or not so that's basically it for this video guys hope you guys enjoyed the video leave a like if you did of course subscribe for more and i'll see you on the next one